I got this chassis from a friend. He's been having difficulty with it. That it's uh, drawing too much current. And the last time he was looking at it, it actually burned out the 35 W4 here, the rectifier tube. So I got the wiring diagram out and he asked me to take a look at this. And it's his, uh, you know, family radio, so I even like to get it working. And this is a True Tone 20 uh, D2017. And I got this information from Nostalgia Air. Okay. So let's turn this over. And he replaced the caps. And it looks like a nice, neat job. So move this out of the way. And there's plenty of room in here. And this bulb might be burned out also. I'm not, I'm not sure. But it doesn't belong down here. Uh, you just put it there. For transport and it does have a, a phono switch here so the mystery is why is this drawing too much current so I'll go through the wiring diagram and we'll take some pictures and see if we can't figure out what the problem is This diagram is from Nostalgia Air. Here I have enlarged the wiring diagram. And there's a few things that I want to point out. This radio has two different types of grounds. This lead that I've lit up red is a floating ground. And if we take a look at the chassis, that floating ground is this bar right here and it is isolated from the chassis. Now if you look in the lower right hand corner you'll see a capacitor and resistor that are in parallel and they have a ground symbol. Well that ground symbol is the chassis so this is the connection between the floating ground and the chassis. And it doesn't look like much, but it's very important. Because if you look all the way over to the left, you'll see that symbol, the chassis ground, is part of the antenna, tuning, and oscillator. So those two components, the capacitor and resistor, are very important to the front end of this radio. Now let's take a closer look at the inside of this radio and see if we can't figure out what the problem is. The floating ground ends up right here. There's a little wire, that black wire goes from the ground of the capacitor to that bar up above and that is the negative side well if you take a look at the capacitors that's the positive side of the capacitor so all these electrolytic capacitors have been installed backwards now here's a typical electrolytic capacitor you see the large arrows pointing to the right and they have a negative symbol in the center. Okay, well that's pointing toward the negative side 
of the electrolytic. So the proper polarity is this, positive on the left and negative on the right. And when it's installed this way, it acts as a capacitor. Well, if you reverse this, what happens is it now turns into a resistor that can overheat and can even explode. Guess how I know? <laughs> okay, before I decided to replace the capacitors, and I mean replace them because they're in backwards, they're probably damaged. I decided to ohm out the coils. I started with the IF cans and I found out that both primaries in both IF cans are open. But there is some good news. The oscillator coil seems to be perfectly fine. So I'll have to have a chat with the owner of this radio to see what he wants to do. Thanks for watching.